Today I want to look at some continuous random variables in Microsoft Excel. In particular, we're going to look at the exponential and the normal distributions. Um, I have some exercises here, you can see. And I'll just kind of show how Microsoft Excel handles these different questions. So first we say a certain machine part lasts on aver average 24 months. What is the probability a given machine part will last between 27 to 36 months? So this is an exponential distribution question. And I know this because, um, well, exponential distributions model things like this, where you have a part or something last for a certain amount of time, amount of time before some sort of event. And you need this parameter m that we define to be 1 over the mean. So since the mean is 24 months, we'll say our m is 1 24th. And so we'll measure everything in terms of months. Okay, now Excel doesn't have, the questions here is asking 27 to 36 months. And Excel doesn't have a um, any sort of function that can handle in between probabilities like that. So what we'll have to do is say, this is the same thing as saying x being less than 36, which we can handle, minus the probability of less than 27. And so you gotta think about it, this is like you take the 36 and below, and you cut off the 27 and below, and what you're left with is between 27 and 36. So from a Excel standpoint, you say, I'll do it in two cells just to show. Okay, so here we have equals expon.dist. That's your exponential distribution. I need a value, we'll call it 36. The value that Excel calls lambda, that's what I called m, is b5. And you'll always want to put true in these situations. That's a difference than discrete. All right, so that's probability of less than 36. Now let's do the same thing with less than 27. So that's an expon.dist, 27, uh, b5 for my value of m, true. And that's less than or equal, less than 27, less than or equal to 27. So the probability that I want that's in between the two would be f5 minus g5. And there it is. You have a 0.10 one five probability of being between 36 and 27 months. All right, now let's move on to normal distribution. So here you have standardized test scores are normally distributed with a mean of 48 and a standard deviation of 3.5. That's very common. And so here the question then is, um, let's put that down somewhere first. So we have a mean of 48 and a standard deviation of 3.5 and so now this question the first one was asking um, my x value is between 39 and 42 now if you're using tables to solve these type of things you'd have to convert to standard normal with Excel you don't have to but we do run in the same problem that we had with the exponential and that's that I cannot calculate in between probabilities so what I need to do again is do x less than 42 minus the probability of x less than 39. And remember the reasoning is, it's like you can imagine you have 42 or below, and then you take the 39 or below and just cut off the 39 or below and you're left with in between 39 and 42. All right, so from Excel, we're gonna say equals norm dot dist, I need a value, let's say that's uh, 42 here, with a mean of 48, I'm just going to reference that cell as J8, with a standard deviation of J9, true. And with continuous probabilities, you're going to want to use true every time. Now when we do less than or 39, that's norm dot dist, 39, J8, J9 for the mean and standard deviation, true. So there's that probability. These are small values. And so the probability in between would be D10 
minus d11. Oh, not d11, sorry. e10. Right, d10 minus e10. And so there it is. You have about a 3.8% probability of being between those two scores. And if you understand mean and standard deviation, that kind of makes sense because the mean was 48. Two standard deviations below, that'd be seven points below, is 41. So both of these scores, 42 and 39, are very much on the low side of the spectrum. Okay, well, let's go the other way. What about probability someone scored below a 59? That's way above the, the mean in terms of standard deviation. And this one, we don't have to do any fancy tricks because it's a less than situation. We can just say equals norm.dist 59 uh, j8 j9 true and there it is we have a 99.92 percent probability of getting a 59 or below and that makes sense because this is well above two this may be three standard deviations above the mean all right so how about um, probability of scoring higher than a 43. Okay, Excel doesn't have a higher than, so remember that's when we have to do, you flip it around, and you say one minus the opposite. So it's one minus X is less than 43. And for continuous distributions, strictly less than is the same as saying less than or equal to. For continuous situations, that's true, not in the discrete case. So here, all I have to say then is equals 1 minus norm.dist 43 j8 j9 for my mean and standard deviation true and there it is you have an, a 92 percent probability of scoring a 43 or higher okay now this situation is a little bit different because we're asking for a percentile so um, that's not this is not what it's asking It isn't, the question is not asking probability of x is less than 45. 45 is not a test score, it's my probability. So what I'm looking for here is x is less than k equals 0.45. What value of k will satisfy that? So Excel has a way of doing that. Like this, we say norm dot inverse. We put in the probability, the mean, which is j8, and standard deviation, which is j9. And there it is, 47.56 marks the 45th percentile. That means that 45% um, of the people scored a 47.56 or lower. Okay, I hope this answers some questions um, on how to use continuous probabilities in Excel. I have another video on showing how to use discrete probabilities, and they work a little bit differently. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.